Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm just glad it's Friday. I'm going to rub my little camera here. A little... Here, I'll do the same thing. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining myself, Danielle Werner, and my dear friend and fellow photographer, Alicia Tartugno. We are coming to you from Live Wonderful. Uh, every Friday, we come on here and we bring you one great photo tip, if not more. We tend to blab for a while and end up giving out a lot of great tips uh, that no matter what level you're at, no matter where you feel like you are in your photography journey, we hope that you can get inspired and not only get some great tips you can run out right away and start using to shoot better, um, but we want to inspire you to really tap into what it means to live wonderful and what it means to bring your stories to life. So as we do this, we've been doing this for a couple months now, um, we actually, if you haven't checked it out yet, go check out our Instagram because every Wednesday we go live on Instagram and uh, our handle is livewonderful underscore. Um, we go live with this one word of Wednesday, Wednesday wisdom, we call it. And so then we take that word and translate it into visual storytelling here on Friday Photo Tips. So if you didn't hang out with us on Instagram this week, you can always check out uh, the post we did um, and our, our uh, IGTV. But this week's word is harmony. Uh, which I got to tell you, I've literally been singing these last few days and kind of like, doo, 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 like I'm feeling this uh, more ebb and flow of harmony yeah. over the idea of like this strict balance, right? Like some perfect balance. So I'm super excited to get into this when it comes to photography with you, Alicia. I know you got some great shots to show us today, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I'm so before we get started and diving into the tips about what it means to bring harmony into your visual stories, I just want to make a few announcements. Um, I uh, These videos, every week, if you've missed any of our videos, you can always find them on our YouTube channel. Uh, so I try to keep them up to date. We've got at least one going up every week. Um, so any backstories or tips that you want to learn from us, you can always check that out on our YouTube channel. Of course, the uh, Instagram account has our Wednesday Wisdom. And those are about the same length of time. But even more exciting, something we have going on right now is we are in the midst of a couple of free photo classes. So why are we doing these free photo classes? <laughs> we, Alicia is coming back down to Orlando and we are putting together an entire warrior weekend of our very best photography classes, beginner and advanced. And so we wanna give you guys a sneak peek of what these classes are all about. They're very comprehensive and fun and really interactive, but we wanna give you a free version of these classes to start out with. Um, so you can check out what it's like to learn from us. So <laughs> this Tuesday night at 6 p.m., you can hang out for our free photo class. We're gonna teach you how to get off auto mode forever. And then at 7 p.m., directly following that, we're gonna give you the five easy steps to photo editing. How do we bring these photos to life and really make them pop uh, using a great program called Lightroom, um, which Alicia and I will be showing you the magic of that um, even more so in Warrior Weekend. So, so I hope you guys, what's that? That it's so important to learn Lightroom yeah. as well. Yes. It's like the icing on the cake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes all the special <laughs> magical moments. Pop. Rather than the icing, <laughs> <laughs> you just want the icing, not the whole cake. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, so, Alicia, will you type in there to the chat box for me? Um, I our our free classes, guys. You can find it at livewonderful.clickmeeting.com. Um, so go sign up for those now. Again, Tuesday, uh, August eleventh. 6 p.m. is the photography class, 7 p.m. is the photo editing class. Okay. Even if you've never picked up a DSLR camera before, I guarantee you everybody will find something very interesting. And we always say you'll have some light bulb moments, right? Literally, you're, you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was actually that creative. I could figure this out, right? Right. <laughs> so, so let's dive in. Let's talk about what it means to bring harmony into our photos. Um, on Wednesday, Alicia, you brought up a lot about feeling off balance, but still being able to like 
navigate through the ebbs and flows and feel okay, right? Yeah, and that it's it's a supposed to be okay to feel the bad and the good and you yeah. know to feel off balance, to know what it feels like to be balanced. Um, Excuse my puppy. Hold on one second. I'm going <laughs> to close that door. Hold on one second. Yeah. Yeah, so more um, yin and yang. Um, yeah, I was talking about yin and yang and how you need a little bit of the bad and the good and, you know, to be balanced. Yeah, um, you need all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to make the whole story. So uh, there's a couple of different things I definitely want to point out today when we bring up these pictures. And I kind of want to bullet point them now so I don't forget. One is the harmony in color. Mm -hmm. the harmony yeah. in um, tones of light, brightnesses and darkness. Yeah. And the harmony of the elements within the layers of our photo. So right. those are the three kind of main points I really want to bring up when I think of how do we harmonize. But I already know you're going to come up with a bunch of other great ones. So <laughs> I, I want to keep in mind that when we think of these words, guys, every week, we're coming to you with advice and expertise as professionals who are out there in the field every day. So we want to feel like we're giving you tidbits of the whole process, right? So if Alicia, if you think of anything that relates to harmony in terms of how you interact with your clients or pose or any level of creating that story for a client, um, when we think of that word harmony, please chime in. Let's add in some other. Yeah, no, it's tough sometimes. So, yeah. So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna bring up my screen, and I believe I have this one photo already open. Yeah. So um, this, uh, this is the shot we posted earlier this week um, when I was talking about the word harmony and what does that mean to harmonize the elements in your photo. Um, so it, it, those of you who might not know this. Um, this program that you're seeing right here is called uh, Adobe Lightroom. This is actually the program that not only Alicia and I, but almost every great professional photographer out there is using this program to not only edit their photos, but you can see the little stars and colors. We use this program to organize our photos too. So you can see how all of these shots have been organized. I knew exactly where I wanted to go and find that picture. So this is, the program we're gonna be teaching you guys on Tuesday night and even more in depth during Warrior Weekend at the end of the month. Um, so I'm gonna use it here to just kind of show you um, a couple elements about this shot and then I wanna switch it over to Alicia's screen and let her share some of hers as well. Um, so what comes to your mind, Alicia? I know you've seen this shot before, but this this was from I a different road trip. Totally, yeah. I see this, this is a different one because I've seen the one of just the mountains and uh -huh. you're adding the element of um, the foreground there with the trees. But yeah. the colors in this create such a harmonious feeling. It's very safe and um, peaceful feeling, I'd say. Yeah, um, there's a softness to that sunset, isn't there? It doesn't feel so harsh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you look, we have a color wheel thing that shows what types of colors have different emotions and feelings. Um, I can't remember what the blue and the yellow would do, um, but I even see a little bit of green in there. So I feel like that is very peaceful, is very balanced, yeah. very, very yeah. in harmony with um, the environment and our feelings. So I yeah. love this photo. <laughs> the, the colors are a great thing to point out, and not um, so. You're pointing out like the specific elements of the color that we identify, right? Like the blue, yep. versus the yellow, and the orange versus the green. And so when when we're thinking about that color wheel, you know, blue represents calm, peaceful. Green represents joy and nature and abundance. And orange oranges represent joy as well, but they also represent brightness and boldness and um, power. So mm -hmm. there's this balance powerful feeling of these there's, mountains. what's that there's a powerful feeling of these mountains too yeah yeah there's a that's the harmony i'm i feel like that really comes to life even just analyzing this out loud with you maybe i felt it standing there but taking a moment to look at it and really dive in you can feel the harmony in the colors but then when you think about 
these mountain ranges themselves and the shapes and the shadings of the blue, mm -hmm. that creates its own harmony through your eyes and how you look through the shot. The, the other thing I want to point out is when you said color, a lot of times we don't think of this, but color in itself creates balance in two ways. One, when you have opposing colors or complementary colors hitting each other, like the oranges and the blues, but also when you have a single color that shows up in multiple places throughout your photo. So I know the blue looks like an obvious one here, but for a minute, guys, whoever's watching this with us, and you know, this is one of the things I'm always telling everyone in class is I'm going to literally teach you how to see with your own eyes a completely different way of looking at your world. I want you to only look at this photo and think of the color orange or yellow mm -hmm. and start to realize where this yeah. yellow shows up. It's not just in the sky. I, I tilted my screen just to see the orange better. I'm like, everybody can see that. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what also I want to note, uh, note on this photo is the mountains themselves, like you said, you brought up the word strong. They're rigid, you know, and but they also kind of have this flow to them, like um, the seaweed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's very wavy and I don't know, there's yeah. there's a lot of harmony when it comes when you think of like ocean or yeah. Yeah. Uh, my art teacher in college or a high school, my painting teacher, she used to tell us if you're going to bring a photo in to, to paint it, I'm going to make you paint it upside down. Oh. And we thought it was just a funny joke at first, but what she's doing is stopping you from identifying with individual objects and starting to make you look at your scene in just shapes and colors and you connect to it differently. You see things differently, mm -hmm. right? So you guys can see the orange that's kind of tapping and barely hitting those front mountain ranges right beyond the first trees there at the bottom of the frame. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it a little bit on the right side, this one tree um, where the sunlight is just hitting the tops of the leaves a little bit. So color is a big part of this. Um, let's talk for a minute um, about the elements. And then I want to go ahead and, and show some of your photos too, Alicia. But Guys, I picked this photo to represent harmony. There's a lot of different photos we can think about and how they're harmonious. But I picked this one for the main reason it popped out to me was the elements within the scene themselves. Alicia just said how she remembers seeing a photo I, I post of just the mountains without the trees in the foreground. And that was the first obvious shot I got. But there was something that happened at this point when I was shooting where I... I forced myself to find harmony again. I was over just shooting the mountains. I was feeling a little challenged and unsure of what to shoot next. There's only so many mountain sunset shots you can get from one point on the mountain. Yeah. Um, and so I walked down the hill a little bit. This is in the Blue Ridge Mountains, by the way, in North Carolina. And I saw the treetops, but I was actually challenged for a minute in how am I going to frame this and make these elements feel harmonious. So mm -hmm. do you notice how there is a good break between these trees? There's like a spacing. I don't know if you can see, can you see my mouse? Yeah. So this breathing room, which we've talked about before, that is such a subtle difference between just my body moving and the angle of my camera to create a bit of harmony here and lay out these foreground elements so that they still stood off the background and they didn't make it look too busy. Um, so this, I, I literally walked around these trees for like five minutes doing this before I found two or three trees that I was like, oh, this, this feels like a puzzle that I just fit together beautifully. And then by cropping out the edges of the outer trees, um, we're giving you this space and this area to feel the harmony in. We just want you to look at these elements. And again, by laying them out this way, you start to see the shapes um, that make your eyes flow through this picture. Mm -hmm. It framed it so well. Yeah, yeah. So, so color, the shapes that you're using, and notice we have foreground, midground, and background. Our midground and background kind of fall into each other there with the long mountain range, but um, I want you guys to start imagining that you've got your frame, 
you know what you want to shoot. It's right here. And right before you actually click, you're thinking about this word harmony and you're looking at your background, your mid ground and your foreground and wherever your focal point is within that. And you're tweaking that last little bit of how can you layer these elements so they have nice spacing and your eyes flow right to that focal point where, where we want you to look. And they flow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, All right, so uh, Alicia, you want, you want to share your screen? Let me. Uh... Well, I actually uploaded a few photos into. This. Oh, perfect! Awesome. Um, so, let's uh, see what. Lord, I, yours. I, it's funny. I uploaded maybe like six, but I'm gonna have to pick a couple here. Um, I do have one landscape, but uh, you've seen this one before. I think we should talk about this one real quick because there's a lot of. Um, this is great, and this this truly takes harmony to that that bigger level where you have balance and symmetry and harmony right yeah and i mean obviously the feeling of me being there felt harmonious um yeah. with a view like that but um i i wanted to get a little bit of depth i wanted layering um just as you were just talking about with the mountains um and you can see that with within this photo um even though, and here's back to our original thought about balance doesn't have to be all, I mean, harmony doesn't always have to be in balance. So exactly. you can the hammock on one side, there was actually yeah. another hammock I could have hung the same way on the other side, but I was sitting in it beforehand. So it's unbalanced in that aspect. It's a little, yeah. um, but it still has a lot of harmony in yeah. it. And you guys can tell if um, if you've done our beginner classes, you know what I'm talking about when I say this. You go from, I think that's going to be the right kind of shot, to I already know what that shot's going to look like. Click, yep. And you're like, L I did it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what happens when you're creating that harmony is like you already kind of see how, you're how that layering is going to piece together and create that shot. And and maybe you notice the hammock's not there or something's a little off, but you're working with what you have to, you know, harmony adds a much more um, organic feel to the story too, because, and I have nothing against perfect studio shoots. I love them just as much, but there's something about the imperfection of an organic shot um, where you aren't for forcing perfect balance that makes it easier to, believe the story or or enjoy diving deeper into that story um, because you're almost you're expecting something to be a little off but it still feels beautiful and graceful as you're looking through the whole shot mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and even the color in this i was a little in post edit um i wanted to keep it warm you know it just felt mm -hmm. like it needed to stay warm um definitely, so definitely. let's um let me see if I can pull up another one. Oh, I have to close that one. I'm um, you've seen um, these before, but this one I can't kind of came across. I don't know if you saw this one, and there was a oh, lot of fun. harmony happening in this shot for me. Huh? Was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, the little. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the little bug on the the feet. No, I can see your cursor. Um, um, let me see. Oh wait, now do it. Okay, can you see it? No, why can't I see your cursor? Mm -hmm. It says it's on a pointer. Pointer. No. Now, oh, can there you? it is, yeah. Okay. So yeah, this little bug, I don't know what that bug was, but um, I didn't realize it until I loaded my photos up, but it was oh, okay. beautiful trying to get these hummingbirds because <laughs> they're so fast. But for some reason, this shot, it just felt harmonious with the two birds and the bug and the feeder and the colors. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got the, you've got uh, colors obvious. So let's point out that one first. Look at all the different places where the color red pops. You got the bird feeder, you got the flowers in the background, you've got the orange on the bird's chest. Look at the water level inside the bird feeder has a red ring around it. Even the bug has red on it. <laughs> the color is just bringing this photo into harmony. And then um, 
the elements themselves now we all know we can only imagine what alicia looked like trying to shoot all these hummingbirds <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what she looked like. But there is a level of harmony that you have to bring to the fact that you are in a physical environment that's not natural to you and you have to fit into the naturalness of this these birds environment, right? So there's this unbalance because it doesn't feel natural. And I you're having so unbalanced. I was like getting knocked off my feet actually trying to figure out how to photograph these birds damn birds. <laughs> right. And mind you guys, I don't know what her settings were, but I guarantee you she was at least at one four thousandth of a second in shutter speed. Yeah, it was very fast. <laughs> Look at those birds, uh, you know, and the wings, they're not moving. They're not standing there like that. So she's freezing that motion with the fast shutter speed. But I want to point out something else that she not, you don't necessarily have control over in this shot, Alicia, but what makes it maybe better than a shot before it is the direction these birds are facing and the where their placement is within the frame. Mm -hmm. So if that upper bird was any closer to the lower bird, it would feel constricted and, and like just not quite the shot. The bug even adds this spatialness to it that creates harmony, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that the birds are facing the bug, I know they're going for the, the water feeder, but <laughs> the way they're pulling into the water feeder from up here and down here, and then the water feeder shoots straight up, the, the spatialness of this shot creates harmony too. And guys, we don't often get to make that choice, right? I'm sure you were shooting in high continuous shooting. I yeah, yeah, and I I was moving around at first, and then I finally like stopped moving and let the birds mm. kind of come to me. So uh, they were zooming by my ears and kind of kissing me on the face, like so. It was it was terrifying at one point. I was like, uh, <laughs> like just stay with yeah. it. So there wasn't a lot of harmony there for me, but I kept breathing and and trying to stay with it. So. Um, it was cool. It was a cool experience. You know, yeah. when I look back on it and being able to have at least, I don't know, maybe 10 great shots from this group of maybe 200, 300. Say, how many did you take? Yeah. Yeah. So I was there for at least 20, 30 minutes. And I think yeah. some other people were getting upset that I was, you know, standing near them and like getting in their shots as well. But I was like, screw it. I'm staying here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's all those parts of the feelings that you get overwhelmed by, not just knowing our settings and if we have the right settings, but um, are we presenting ourselves in a way that's going to allow these animals to come forward and get in our frame when it comes to wildlife? I just told a private lesson student this the other day. We were sitting in the Dixon Azalea Park doing the lesson, and I'm talking, 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 and he goes, hey there's a lizard. And I went, okay, shh. <laughs> I'm telling him to shush, but I needed to shush, right? We immediately changed our mood and our feeling to be around this wild animal, this little lizard, um, because you have to step out of your own space for a minute to, to gracefully harmonize with what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do have to ignore the other humans in the room if um, <laughs> you really want the shot. Um, yeah, there is moments of a lot of uncomfortable spaces that you're going to put yourself in and you kind of just have to sift through it and, and get that, to That's that. in harmony though, right? Like, yeah. It's almost like a, um, even when I, we're going to talk about this more as we get to Warrior Weekend, but even when I was traveling and, and was afraid, just, you know, not knowing where I was going to go next or, you know volunteer, whatever. I just didn't know what my plan was. There were these, these, this level of hyper awareness that was always there, mm -hmm. but then there would be these points of complete fear that would overwhelm me. Right. And what I learned over time was, okay, identify with that. Right. Like, yeah, okay, you feel that you're still here though, even though you're in complete fear right now, you're still here breathing, standing, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to let it direct your next action? So um, that trip made me realize you have to get there. You have to get to this edge and this level of uncomfortability before you can ever see a new possibility of how you could look at things differently. And I think 
I learned on that trip that once I'm there, okay, now I'm going to find harmony. Now I'm going to be able to really, you know, have that vantage point that lets me make better choices or, or go take a cooler shot or not be afraid to walk down that street or, or go on that mm -hmm. hike by myself or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, it, it, that fear is an important compass that, you know, I, I don't mean to go there so much. I know we talk about more of this, uh, what it means in life when we're doing Wednesday wisdom, but when you are shooting guys and you feel that level of fear or uncomfortability or unsureness, know that that is a huge stepping stone and you've got to go there, right? Like, yeah, you, step out of those comfort zones. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, scary. This is a, it's scary, okay. but yeah, and I smile because it's like you and I both know we've hit those scary moments and we're like, well, I'm not going back now. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to push through it, and you always end up every any any experience you're given, you're meant to go through. So, um. That was awesome. That was a gorgeous shot. Love those pictures. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. You, one more you want to show? You feel good or do you want to show one? We can do this one quickly. Yeah, show me one more. Oh, yeah, we have to see that. Jeez. Are you, are you ready to see this in December? <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, so excited. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a landscape because I never do landscapes and you're always like on top of your game with landscapes. Landscapes. So, um, Alicia went to Costa Rica in January and, uh, she's going back with me again in December cause I am getting married in Costa Rica in, Jan in December. And, uh, it's crazy because I love this place. It's the first place in the world that is running 100% on renewable energies. Um, their entire, uh, way of living, um, and living off the land is just something I can't wait to go experience. And I, I'm warning you all, it live wonderful. I keep joking, I may never come back. You might have to come see me in Costa Rica, especially when you see a shot like this. <laughs> I'm fine <with> that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, let's talk a little bit yeah. about yeah. color and light and how, um, you know, these warm and cool colors really blast that, you know, really represent that harmony in, in this shot. I love, the spark of red and purple flowers in the bottom mm. right corner that's just barely being hit by that sunlight. They've got this colder tone to them on the backside and mm -hmm. it kind of, it really like plays off the blues in the sky. And then of course you've got all these warm greens and yellows um, and oranges. Uh, so there's, there's just two things I'm thinking of. One, those warm and cold colors, but also this photo has hard and soft light mm. and they work together to kind of, you know, bring you both. Sometimes most photos only have one or the other that we're trying to work with. You know, what's funny is I was trying to catch the sun just peeking over that mm -hmm. little mountain right there going down. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I, it was too bright if it was like right up, above it or if, if it was below it would be a completely different shot yeah um, totally because it's so. it's the it's the sun which is your light source and yet you're trying to focus on it yeah um, <laughs> so i'll give you i'll give you a little hint guys and then i want to use this photo to kind of um dive into what we're really going to be uh yeah doing at the end of the month yeah, um, because this is how what you're going to learn at the end of the month is how yeah. i do yeah, absolutely. So first, I want to point one thing out. You see that gorgeous sunburst she's got in this picture, guys? You're going to learn how to do this in the first of our four classes on Warrior Weekend. And what she's done here is um, she has created this starburst effect by using a high aperture. So uh, we're going to teach you in our Get Off Auto Forever class. We will literally mm -hmm. tell you we will never use auto mode again after this one class. We want to teach you how to control three main settings, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. But if you have a DSLR these are or a mirrorless camera, these are the three settings that all us pros, this is pretty much all we think about most of the time are these three settings. And so for Alicia to want this look, she knew what she needed to do to capture that and, and bring that, that bursting effect. Um, of course, one thing with landscapes that I've learned over the years is 
light is everything. We teach you that in the beginner class. It's all the camera sees. But when it comes to landscapes, you can't always control that light. So we're constantly second guessing ourselves and more and analyzing what's actually happening to our scene um, to be able to catch that moment when it just bursts over the edge and you know what's going to happen when it hits those points of light. But behind that light, it's nice and soft and airy looking. So this is this is exciting. So the other thing is, I don't know if you did it with this shot, Alicia. Maybe you didn't, but beginner class is all about getting off auto. We're, we're doing an advanced class that we haven't really ever taught before. Alicia's going to bring in some of her portrait stuff. We're going to be bringing back some of the things we taught last year in our portrait workshop. But I'm going to also dive into HDR photography mm -hmm. and panoramic photography. So is this an HDR shot, Alicia? This is a wide angle HDR shot. I did awesome. not do a pan. Yeah. Yeah. But it is an HDR shot. Yeah. So HDR, guys, um, stands for high dynamic range. And just to give you a snippet, um, we're going to be going into this a little bit more in the free class on, on um, Tuesday. But think of it this way. The brightest part of your photo and the darkest part of your photo, if you, they're too extreme, then we take multiple frames at different levels of light and blend them together so that we can get all that extreme lighting into one shot. Yeah. So to hint, to move forward, <laughs> you guys are gonna be able to take this kind of shot more specifically after our advanced class when we teach you how to do um, exposure bracketing and create an HDR photo. And then like you said at the beginning, Alicia, we love the icing more than anything. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of what brings this photo out um, and makes it magical is her, your post-production work, right? The photo mm -hmm. editing that you've done, which of course is how we blend the photos together anyway in Lightroom, but it's also where we make all these things we've talked about today really stand out to help tell our story. So how do we make those warm colors pop and those cold colors pop? How do we make the um, the shadows, be able to see the light and details in the shadows without losing the texture of those bright, bright clouds. So in Lightroom, guys, we're not only going to teach you how to organize and pick your best shots, but we want to show you how to dive in deeper into these, you know, editing tools so you can really hone in on certain aspects of your, your photo and only alter those areas again so that your story gets brought to life better and better every time you shoot. So uh, how, um, I wanna do this. I just wanna end with, I just wanna stare at this picture, actually. I just wanna stay here and stare at <laughs> that picture all day. Um, I am going to, um, uh, will you just, <laughs> what's that? The make us big. Yes. Um, so will you put into the, uh, Will you put the link for Warrior Weekend into the chat box? I'm actually going to head over to the webpage now so you guys can see what it looks like um, and check it out. And I just want to bring up one other point. We've only got a few more days left of our Warrior Weekend. So um, if you guys are uh, thinking about it or on the fence and maybe, maybe do, maybe you don't want to take the classes, right now you need to know they are on sale. Can you see my screen livewonderful.com slash warrior weekend alicia can you see my screen um it's going i can see it but it's on the click meeting right now why is it on the click meeting hold on hold on technical difficulties i'm coming i'm coming uh there we are all right how's that good so um you're going to see this shot again in a little bit too, but uh, that's Alicia and I on our road trip where, <laughs> um, funny enough, I swear Alicia became a photo warrior that week. That was like the moment that the badass came out with the camera <laughs> and she I was like no longer a hobbyist, but this was like, I'm, I'm a warrior. I'm doing this. This is me. Um, so class one, like I said, we're going to be getting you off auto mode and really teaching you how to use manual mode on your camera. Class two, we'll dive into what it takes to create great portraits, HDR, and panoramic shots. And then um, class three is where we're going to dive into those um, standard um, photo editing programs. 
Uh, and then four, I'm excited about this one, Alicia. Mm -hmm. We're going to dive into not only how to morph and create those HDR and panoramic shots in Lightroom, but Alicia's going to show you some of her um, specialty skills on how to retouch portraits as well. Make those eyes pop, get rid of the zits and wrinkles we all love to <laughs> not have. Um, so each of these classes, guys, right now is on sale for $75. They will go back up to full price of $95 on August 15th. So if you're thinking about doing this, now's your chance. Um, and if you're still not quite sure, but you want to get a sneak peek, um, join us for our free class on the 11th from six to seven and seven to eight. We're going to be giving you a sneak peek about these, um, the beginner photography and the beginner Lightroom class. So you're going to see what it's like for us to work together on these online classes. These are online classes guys we do love sharing in person and hopefully we will get back to those soon but we want to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to learn all these great skills we keep sharing uh even if um you can't get out and about right now so from the comfort of your home we'd love for you to join us it's august 29th and 30th alicia's actually coming here to <laughs> orlando i'm so excited i feel like um i feel like it's a uh it's like a, um, a reunion. Yeah, like I feel like I'm like, where has she been? She hasn't been here. I miss her. Been a hot minute, not for sure. Yeah. So only since May, but but still May, June. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been a little long. longer than we usually do. We're usually two every three months. So we're gonna be here, not in the office, but upstairs in the studio. Um, demonstrating, giving you guys this, this great information. We have a great presentation for each one of these classes. Um, so go check it out. We hope you join us for our free class on uh, Tuesday night and then end of the month. See you at Warrior Weekend. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, guys, go out, get your cameras, find some harmony, enjoy this weekend, tap into the present moment, live wonderful, and, and go have some fun. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>